So the part finally came in to pull this puller off. It was definitely well spent. It was like eight, eight to ten dollars, something like that. It's the Motion Pro. Very good, because I mean that thing was stuck on there pretty, pretty good. Got a pretty big injury on it too. Anyways, next is uh, to pull off the plate right here. Why don't you pull off all the wires, pull the plate off, and then we can get to the time and chain, and then we can actually start splitting the cases. Got a bunch of parts in. All these parts are here. Got batteries, gaskets, everything. Kind of got a new starter relay sitting around, exhaust, cables. I mean, everything's there. And then I got a bunch of parts from uh, Yamaha seals, bushings, just little odds and ends that I noticed were missing on the. I mean, a little bit of everything. It's probably the brake cable here, the rear fenders, a new petcock. So. Parts are coming in. We're gonna start the uh, assembly pretty soon. I'm waiting on a ultrasonic cleaner to come in, and when that comes in, we can start cleaning up all these parts and redo the head and uh, start assembling this thing. getting ready to bolt up the engine cases together with the crank case. One of these bolts, like this one, was really angled, you can see there. And so I went ahead and bought two extras. So that's what I just took out the two worst ones there, replaced it, and there's only one long one. There we go, that's where I'm gonna leave it for tonight. As you can see, there's a nice uh, bead all the way down and around. So, yeah, everything is torque bag. That was a correct uh, torque sequence there. So we're, we're done with this part, it's all done. So uh, now we're just gonna go on to the sides. That's all I'm gonna do for tonight, so see y'all tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna assemble a little bit on this side and the other side. No one needs, no one's gonna need to know how to assemble a Badger 80 motor, so. Just sit back and watch this little time lapse so I put this thing together with Phillips head bolts. Perfect Phillips heads set of bolts.
Okay, even though I don't think I'm at this point just yet, I did go ahead and get a new timing chain. This is a new OEM chain here on the bottom, the new one. I don't really think this motor's got that much time on it, but like I said, I was in there already. This thing be top notch, so go ahead and put a new chain in it along with everything else. All right, so with new O-rings installed there, new O-ring back side of the stator, all oiled up, new oil still here, ready to install it. So when I went to go install the clutch onto the uh, badger here, I noticed right off the bat that these clutches are shot. This one's already pretty worn down. This one here's got some junk built up on it right there. And this one here is just completely missing, and that's pretty much consistent all the way down. Just missing padding right along the edges there. And I was wondering kind of what that, I thought it was gasket in the bottom of the crankcase, but that's what it was, so. Got the new clutches soaking. And just got some new ones. Okay, so what I did on the disc here is I just took, since they were all kind of, I guess this part was sitting in some water or some old oil or whatever, so they all did get chewed up, but what I did is I went through and I sanded them. So now they are all smooth. I know this is not ideal, and of course I wouldn't do this on many other things, but this is a 1987, 90, 97, 98 Badger 80, so, and it's going to stay my son's first four-wheeler, so it doesn't really matter too much, but at least they're all smooth, everything's scuffed up real nice, so I'm just going to go ahead and install these. Like I said, it's not going to catch anything because it is, they did wear in pretty nicely, so go ahead and get these installed with the new clutch pads and if it is a problem later on I'll take it back apart and hopefully try to find some new disc for it. And there are 12 of these steel balls that go into the clutch basket here. And they say that if you take out four and you evenly space them back out and around that it's going to help the clutch engagement. It's gonna make it rev up a little bit higher, kind of like a clutch kit. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can take out four, you can take out eight. Eight's a little bit extreme, so I'm just gonna take out four and evenly space them out. So then there you go, you got four. Usually there'd be, like I said, a third one on each one of these with one of these little indents open. Now I got two of them, so I got four balls in there. I kind of want to soup this thing up, but there's not much you can do to it, so I'm kind of doing all the free things. Okay, so we got the new cylinder in and the new piston with the rings on there. I'm gonna badger here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on along with the whole new gasket set. Flood, flood. Sorry, but I kind of got ahead of myself. Um, just put the head on, bolted it all down, torqued it down, put on the cam chain gear, put the bolt on. I haven't torqued that down yet and just slid in the, uh, the tensioner here. So that's where I'm at now. Next, I just got to tighten up the valves here, get the specs on it, and then uh, I got the new spark plug in there also. So yeah, probably put uh, this side together. Got that all buttoned up too. The clutches are in like you saw. So um, just gotta put in the oil screen. New cylinder's looking good. And we'll be able to 
Not put this thing in the motor or in the frame yet. Still sanding it and painting it. Got the new O-rings and gaskets <clears throat> in there. Got the new gasket around. So just simply gonna put this part on. So got all the valves set. Both intake and exhaust are at .004. And I've got new O-rings on all the seats here. So just about ready to finish this up. 